And hello, welcome back to Style with Roses talk show with me, Rose CBC. We do hope you have been following us this season because we've had an amazing journey into the diaspora. This series is around bringing you personalities, profiles, Zambians and Africans that have gone out to different parts of the world and have come back and are adding value back home. Today will be no different as I have the pleasure of having a conversation with the first female Zambian pediatric surgeon by the name of Dr. Patricia Shinondo. You don't want to miss this. You really want to watch this because not only is she beautiful in looks, she is beautiful in heart too. So stay right there. I will be right back with her only on Stylist Roses. Welcome back to Style with Roses. We hope by now you have joined us because I have a very interesting guest with me today. The first female Zambian pediatric surgeon, Dr. Patricia Shinondo, a recipient of an award in the field of medicine and totally passionate about what she does. She spreads her knowledge even with the younger generation and making sure that she mentors them. So it's no surprise that she is a pediatric surgeon. Welcome, Thank Dr. You. Patricia. Thank you. So Shino. glad to be here. Yes, I'm so delighted to see you. I was hoping that I could fall under the pediatric. What age range is pediatric? <laughs> I don't think you'll quite make it. It's 15 and below. I'm just missing it. <laughs> just, 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 just a little a, bit. Just a notch, a notch down. <laughs> yeah. And that's what we want to see more of. We want to really break you down a little bit and just make you relaxed and find out more about you. Because when people say doctor, it's like, does she have a life? Does yeah. anything else happen around her? Yeah. So I want to ask you a few little questions. I even have to put on my glasses. Now you're even convinced I that know. for sure I can't be. You're not quite pediatric. <laughs> not, not quite. <laughs> you didn't have to rub it in like that. You know, I'm going to get you. So I'm getting you in the next one minute. I'm going to ask you some questions. Okay. And you just give me yes or no answers. Don't overthink it. Don't over explain it. The explanation is for the couch. Are you ready for ready. me? Quick, quick, one minute. So, as an active mentor, do you have a mentor too? I do. When was the last time you drank water? Just before we started having a chat. How many languages do you speak? Uh, not counting our local, three. Okay. Are there any more that you're learning? Uh, not right now. What is something that would surprise anyone about you when they meet you for the first time? I sing. Like sing, sing. sing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm supposed like, to be like, focused and just ask him. <laughs> like not even sing in the shower. I think I sing. You sing? Yeah. Okay, sing. Not idol, sing. Well, I've never made it to idols, <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> and what is the strangest thing you've come across while traveling? Hmm. Wow, that's an odd question. I don't know. Can I pass? Yes, you can yeah. pass. What is the local destination that you want to revisit? Mfue. I think Mfue. I really love Mfue. Is it? Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Which is bigger though, South Luangwa or Lower Zambezi National Park? Oh, you're trying to really get Now me. get you to the I'll, knowledge. I'll say Lower Zambezi. Yeah. So you see, even me, I, even this, that's my scalpel. You're right? in, my, in my space. <laughs> <laughs> what are the three things that recent parents should look out for in their infants? Um, feeding well. Mm -hmm. Um good weight gain Great. Um, all fingers and toes that's fair that's <laughs> right we all want that as parents <laughs> do you prefer watching the sunrise or the sunset oh the sunset 
beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. How old were you when you delivered your first baby as a known to yourself? Now that is you, the surgeon. How old were you? Oh, we're giving away too much information with that question. Okay, okay. Mm. all right. Uh, you see, I know. now I got you at the age. I told you I'm getting I'm not pediatric either. <laughs> 30. Nice, okay. Yeah. What is a one-off item off your bucket list that you look forward to crossing? Skydiving. Skydiving. She is going to <laughs> go skydiving alone. I am nowhere <laughs> near that diving. And on that note, I think we will take a break. And when we come back, she will be sitting with me on the couch if she hasn't gone skydiving. <laughs> Stay right there. We will be right back. Just let go. Welcome back. In case you have just joined us, today is a very interesting day where we get cut through it and not literally. The reason is I am hanging out with Zambia's first female pediatric surgeon and we had so much fun getting to know a little bit about her. But what's interesting about it is Dr. Patricia Shinondo has also been in the diaspora. So we'd like you to get to know a little bit more about her. Welcome, Dr. Thank you. Pat I'll call you Dr. Patricia. That's fine. It just sounds so feminine. That works. You're just so elegant and so refined. Oh, bless. You don't Thank look you. like a doctor. Sorry for being like... How do they look? That's just a good question. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think but we get that a lot, so... You get yeah. that a lot, yeah. right? we do. Okay. So tell us more about your diaspora journey. How did you find yourself there? How long were you there? What did you do when you were there? So I was uh, blessed to be in Russia. I spent uh, seven years in Russia. It was an opportunity that just landed in my destiny, so to speak. I was, I was passionate about medicine. I always knew that's where my heart was going. Okay. Um, but every other option I tried didn't work. At the time, UNSA was having strikes and they were closed for so long. Mm. So I looked elsewhere. I tried to apply to a couple of other universities, you know, within SADC and it wasn't working. Mm. And then I found these uh, bursary offers in the newspapers and I thought, that's an option. Yeah, so I went there. And on the day I went there, there was an option for China, Cuba, and Russia. My first option was Cuba. I'll be honest and say that. Um, Why Cuba? I just thought from the three options, Cuba, I had heard that Cuba was good with medical training. I didn't know a thing about Russia. Okay. Yeah, it was so foreign and distant to me. But on the day I took my papers in, the lady said, oh, you just missed, we just closed that off, but Russia's available. And I was like, let's do it. Let me try. Yeah, because... I think the, the core of my why was I need to get this done. And I think that's what, you know, I found out about my time there. Mm. It tested my why. You know, you hear a lot about people's why. Why was I doing it? Because I always knew I had to get this done. How I got it done was secondary. I just had to get it done. So it wasn't daunting to be going so far away. It just was part of the plan. Very interesting plan. And what is exceptionally interesting for me is how you got there was not because of a negative connotation, because sometimes you get that, that people who have gone out into the diaspora to study or to live are shunning their own country. But you're talking about, you had a time frame for yourself in terms of when you wanted to finish studying for medicine and we had some interruptions in our education system and that's what got you there first. Yeah, absolutely. Great stuff. So it was, it was good that you took that decision. Was it worth it? Oh yeah, I would do it again, in you a would, heartbeat. You would. It was difficult. You know, I won't be the, the first to say it wasn't. It was very challenging. But it was a time that either made or break, break broke you, you know. Because it, 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 it brought a lot of um, resilience out of me, right? It made me stronger than I ever thought I was. Mm. So I think it, it was a defining moment in the person I am today. Out on the other side of the world and on top of that studying medicine. Yes. What was the most daunting uh, lesson that you would have learned in your career, in the journey of, because being a pediatric surgeon, obviously, it's like, I don't want to say it on screen. You, you, you <laughs> tell it yourself. What was it like? That's what I would really like to know. What were, what were the experiences like when you say, you um, could do it again? But... 
Well, first of all, the, the cultural shock is the first thing to mention. There is a, a huge cultural shock. Mm. Um, and then the language, you know, nobody speaks a word of English. Maybe the, the teachers of the Russian language spoke a little bit, but you know, you walked around with a, a dictionary and you had to get your way around in the beginning. Um, so a lot of people did give up and throw in the towel and say, I'm going back. Yeah, it was hard for a lot, but I knew where I was coming from. I knew what my options were or lack thereof. And the goal. And the, the goal. goal. Is important. The goal was always important. The why. It was why am I here? I'm here to get to the end. So there's a, a short timeline. I can work through this. And I just stuck my head in the books and I kept doing it. How many years did you cut by studying there as opposed to staying home? It worked out the same. So the training program is six years as opposed to ours used to be seven. Okay. But I had an extra one year for the language orientation. So it was seven years in total. Okay. Seven years is a long time, but they also say seven is the number of completion. So when we come back, Dr. Patricia will be taking us more into her journey out in Russia and how she found her way back home and what she's doing here. You don't want to miss that. Stay right here. We will be right back with Style with Roses. Welcome back. We're having such an interesting time having a conversation with Dr. Patricia Shinonda. She is only the first Zambian female pediatric surgeon and definitely we are so proud of her and in all of all that she has done. So you've gone to Russia, you spent seven years there studying, even got over the language barrier. So you've come back home and how was that reintegrating yourself back home and what is it that you brought back home with you? Mm. I think it was really difficult. I think the, the interim first two, three years, because I literally thought in Russian, you know, because we trained in Russian language and I was dreaming and thinking in Russian. All my medical knowledge was in Russian language. So all of us, I think that train there, you have to come back and retrain your mind again to relearn everything in English. Exactly. And I think being away in those defining years of anybody's life is, is difficult to come back to society and, and find your clique, find your friends, find your space. Yeah, when it, you know, you just can't sort of catch up mm -hmm. at a certain I pace. I with that 100%. Absolutely. But so, it's all about me today. <laughs> <laughs> so there was that. And then um, also being thought as second best because you weren't trained locally in a sense wow. yeah that always seemed to to follow along somewhere so it was work twice as hard to prove yourself in the beginning yeah i find that very um common and it's um it's unsettling but the most important thing is you overcome i, I completely resonate with that in terms of feeling like you've missed out on so many years and of course now the, the kind of path that you had chosen that didn't even make it easier because you don't really have a, a lot of women in the medicine space. I know this is something that you actually got recognized for in the field of medicine and, you know, first female pediatric surgeon. Um, do we have more that have come out since you or are you still the reigning queen? So um, that's a bit daunting. I'll just say each time I hear first, it is daunting because there's a lot of eyes and a lot is expected. Yes. And I'll tell you, when that was first honorably bestowed or told to me, it was... Uh, good for the first five minutes but after that it hit me that this needs to change in today's era and time and exactly that comes with it. yeah so i had a new agenda right in that moment okay. that i changed the narrative that it shouldn't stay first mm -hmm. so i'm actively mentoring i'm actively seeking young girls to, to to bring with me to pull with me because today 2021 we shouldn't be talking about first you know women can shatter forget reaching a ceiling we yeah. can shatter and dominate fields mm -hmm. so yes I'm I'm I have females in training now should be about 
four in training, well one to graduate later in the year. Okay. So it's good. And it's you progress. must be quite ecstatic about the developments in the medical space. In Zambia now, we've got a lot of facilities that ordinarily weren't there before. So does that make your life easier, your work easier in terms of you being able to execute on, on your work and your mandate as a surgeon? Yes, I think the medical field is growing exponentially. You know, the possibilities are grandiose, mm -hmm. you know. What I do find though is there is an honest on us that are filling the shoes today to be active about mentoring those following us because we determine how easy it becomes for them moving forward. I like that, really. So hold that thought. Um, I still want to get more out of you. I, I, you still owe me, it's not over. If you miss the first part of it, there is a little bit of an owing that she has, but I'm not gonna get into that because we're taking a quick break. And when we come back, more with Dr. Patricia Shinondo. Stay right there. Welcome back. In case you have missed this episode, you're right in time. You're still watching Style with Roses with me, Rose CBC, hanging out with Dr. Patricia Shinondo. I know in the last bit you talked about first being daunting. She is only the first female pediatric <laughs> surgeon. So you're gonna you're gonna gonna write, I'm just going to rub it in as much as I can. I see you doing that. I see, yeah, that's, it's <laughs> deliberate, but it also brings me to... Um, the next question that I have for you, I was wondering, you are mentoring and you, you, you're very eager and enthusiastic about um, making sure that we get rid of the first and have more females coming into, into that space. You've already done like four. How is that going in terms of opportunities for women to bring other women with them? Because there's always that connotation that, you know, there are challenges when we have to bring others up to where we are. Because sometimes... Others like that first. I think you're the one who doesn't like the first, but others want that first. <laughs> Hold on to only me. Yeah. How do we overcome that? Um, I think for me personally, it was about remembering my journey. You know, Russia involved a lot of God's hand in my life and he used people. He used people I couldn't have foreseen in that seven years. He was definitely there working through people. You know, it, I, I believe it takes a village to, to educate a girl and take her as far as a roof or a ceiling or shatter it alone. Mm. So I feel there was a village for me and I owe it to the next girl that needs me to be part of her village. You know, so I'm, I'm active about that, I'm passionate about it. I think all of us as women in influence, spheres of influence, like yourself or myself, wherever we are, to be that village that any other person in our network need us to be. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So coming, bringing it back now to the medical space and the training that you had in Russia. You spoke strongly about how it shaped the way you thought in terms of resilience, discipline, and also how you approach things. Just share a little bit about what the value is of us understanding that as Africans, that if we are going to change the Africa that we want it to be, there are those other softer elements that we need to, to pick up. How does one enhance those attributes and what can, you, what can you advise somebody who needs those other mental elements and not just the title? Yeah, um, one of the many things I learned there was work ethic. Um, they were very big about being dedicated to work. Regardless of a snowstorm, regardless of terrible weather, they made it to work Funerals, and they worked. Cousins, neighbor died. Yeah, and, and sometimes we time. yes, we tend to be a bit lax with how effective we are in the workspace, um, or we get to the workplace and we are not as bare um, minimum. Yes, we don't give a hundred of our of our effort okay. because maybe we think we're not being valued or something or the other. But I think we need to 
give our 100%. You know, I, I believe today do your best, tomorrow wake up and do your best again, right? Because I can only impact today. This is my path. I can't focus on Rose's path and try to be Rose and be effective in her space. So my space is where I need to give 100%. And so I believe trying to have excellence in every day is how we make a difference. I love that you touch on that because I, I feel like um, in Africa, even in our own country to be specific, we've got so many opportunities that we can build up on from um, inspired ideas and all. So it's not like I can just wake up tomorrow, as you say, and decide I want to be like Patricia. I'm going to be, I'll start now. To, I can't even spell scapel, but now I want to be <laughs> past because I like your, your white robe and the doctor title that comes with it. So what encouragement would you give to us as Africans from the all that you picked up on how the Russians did things? What lesson can we learn in owning and being proud of who we are created to be? Sure. Um, there is value in uh, our, our originality. Um, they, they learned everything they could from all of us while we were there. Mm -hmm. um, they would pick up on, on certain nuances and things we did or how we did it. Really? Yeah, and then, and then they valued it. You know, they gave you credit for it, but they sort of made it work for them as well, you know? And I think we, we spend a lot of time um, looking at others and trying to be them but how can we then mimic what we bring back just as you're trying to to highlight what we learned from our experiences and we brought it back yeah. you know finding finding excellence in 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 our in our space mm. you know us as Zambians just trying to use what we have to the best of our ability love it love it love it and that's what we're talking about we continue to have conversations around the value that Zambians and Africans have brought back when they've been out and exposed to something. You're watching Star Wars Roses, very interesting and a different side to the good Dr. Patricia Shinondo. Don't go away because when we come back, she gets to, yes, pass the rose. Stay right there. Welcome back. We hope you've been following this very intriguing conversation that I'm having with Dr. Patricia Shinondo. She's already exhibiting, mentoring other girls so that we remove the title of first because she constantly gets referred to as the first female pediatric session. But you see now I'm still saying it. Yes, <laughs> I accept. So, uh, you accept. You just have to accept it. Tell me a little bit more about how it makes you feel when you mentor other young women and you see them actually executing and walking the path that you may have played a role in, how valuable is that input? Um, I think it's, it's enlightening because it, it, it reminds me of all the people that helped me, really. I think it isn't about patting myself on the back. It's about all of us extending a hand and that way we all make it further. You know, it shouldn't just be about me trying to get to one place, but if more of us get there, then we do more together. Yeah. Yeah. And it is said when, when women work together, incredible things happen. And those are the strengths that we should focus on harnessing. So the beauty about um, the Star Wars Roses platform is we've also got our own tradition on this platform. And I know you've been watching and you want your, your, own, you want your own part of it. So we would like you to pass the rose. And with this beautiful rose, you know, white is always about the purity of our young generation. How do we preserve that? How do we shield them from some of the challenges they're going to face? Language barriers, uh, limitation of numbers in, in certain sectors and spheres where you've gone into medicine. There's a rural girl who's like you. She says, I'm not going to wait nine, ten years to study medicine. I want to study it in five years and where am I going to do that? 
Can you speak to that rural girl and show her how it can be for her, just as it was for you? So I'm passing this rose on to you as a symbol of appreciation for you and the work that you've done, and you get to pass it on to a young girl. Right, I think this is really beautiful, the concept of the message you're sending. I would say to the young girl who has a dream, a vision, I would say, um, believe in your why, your reason why will be what will keep you awake at night studying. Your reason why will be what will make you not um, try to be the cool girl in the group and not hang out with the friends. Your reason why will be what will keep you going when everyone tells you it's a boys club, you don't belong in the room. Um, and your reason why keeps you holding on to faith and, and trust in your, your village, trust in the people God places around you because we all need them We've all used them and we succeed with each other. So you are your biggest critic and your biggest defense. So keep believing in yourself, it is all possible. That's what I would say to her. Oh, bless. that is so beautiful. And definitely it can be for her as well. So in just wrapping up, much as I don't want to let you go, I don't, I'm not convinced that I've gotten you back for what, was, what did I have nothing, nothing at all. There's no I'm beef joking. at all. But I just want you in your in your last remarks to just take us on a journey. The world is not the same as we know it in the last year and a half. Everything has completely changed. And we know um, the medical space has been the most hit. And kudos to you, all of you in um, the medical field, the frontliners, everybody has done their best to try and face um, the pandemic and the change that we never ever expected. Did you see a lot of that happen to young children and how have you coped? Um, that's a, a deep question. It's very deep. Uh, yeah, yeah. Of course, all of us were, were hit in ways we couldn't have imagined. Somehow, in God's wisdom, we were spared, of course, compared to so many other countries in the West and in Europe. Um, for reasons we're still researching um, but children were spared compared to adults yes children were definitely spared we've had children uh, infected with covid locally but definitely the number is not as high as adults so we, we we've had to help where we needed to you know it was all hands on deck when the numbers were really high um, but what also happened is the the medical professionals became more aware of our humanity um, many times, I yeah, many times I think we were perceived as, as shields, as, as, as heroes even. But this, this, even this, negligent at most times and, and incapable yeah, of saving us. Yeah, but this affected us and infected us. So we had to take care of ourselves. We've had to learn to take care of ourselves. Mental health has been a big one that's affected health workers. And it's, it's, it's highlighted in, in so many ways. So now, you know, we're talking about care for the caregiver. You know, I need to make sure I'm in a good space to care for everybody that needs medical help. You've got to give from, from a point of being filled yourself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So beautiful. And um, these are some of the conversations that we continue to have. You are doing a great job. You are really changing the landscape of how young girls can look at certain professions and careers and really want to be like you and just learn from you they can't obviously be you but they will at least aspire to be you so if we needed to reach you as a mentor as somebody who we can challenge and take up on the pledge to bring on other girls how do we get in touch with you do you have you formalized your mentorship program or how how do young girls reach you so the mentorship program is still work in progress but i could be reached through my agent um eagle wings consultancy mm -hmm website is www.ewconsults.com I have a Twitter page small caps at P underscore shins s-h-i-n-s so people can reach out and um, we can collaborate I'm all for mentorship so there is a cool side did you hear the handle like shins like shins where'd that come from but you know what we can continue to have fun with this conversation and on this platform but it's time for us to say thank you so much to Dr. Patricia Shinondo for joining us on Style with Roses with me, Rose CBC. And we continue the conversations and reminding you that whatever it is that you're gifted to do, it can be for you. 
Remember, you're supposed to bud, blossom, and flourish because that's what roses do. Until the next time, bye-bye for now. You can flourish if you do try. Pass them out and see you in your new shine. Shine like gold. Bloom like a rose. It's a long way from the ground up. But you keep it moving, keep it non-stop. Shine like gold. Bloom like a rose. Shine like bloom just like a rose. Just like a rose.